most people come to us with needs to want to further their cardiovascular fitness, be it for endurance exercise or just for health or well-being. We believe the best way to do this is by measuring the VO2 max or the point at which maximum oxygen consumption occurs in every individual and then tailoring a training environment such that some of their time is spent at this ceiling. Recent research has shown that this is a very time efficient way of inducing rapid adaptation and it also rate limits the individual from going too hard or too easy. Today we're going to discuss how we can optimise an individual's training environment in line with this physiological phenomenon called VO2 max. This next graph outlines a graded step test. This graph along the bottom axis has time, side axis is power output or resistance, and you have a linear increase in resistance over time. This is the standard VO2 max testing protocol. A linear increase in power output for a given amount of time. This next graph tracks and outlines oxygen uptake across the graded exercise test. Similar to the resistance on the graded exercise test, you have a linear increase in oxygen consumption. So as exercise intensity increases, so too does oxygen consumption in a rather linear fashion. This is actually around about 0.9 of a correlation coefficient. So they're very well correlated. Intensity increases, oxygen demand increases, up to a point where a plateau occurs here. VO2 max occurs at the highest oxygen output, but the plateau usually occurs around 10% prior to that. The minimum power output required to elicit this plateau, in this case approximately 10 miles per hour in running speed, or in cycling terms it could be 300 watts, is an important metric because it outlines the minimum power required to elicit the plateau in oxygen consumption. So for this individual here, training them at 10 miles per hour will achieve a similar oxygen uptake to training them at 12 miles per hour. Yet, at 10 miles per hour, they'll be able to spend significantly more time training at their ceiling than what they would at 12 miles per hour. This analysis gives us information to be able to work with any individual to tailor a suitable training environment such that they're training at their VO2 max and not above it. A standard ramp test will facilitate this for any individual of any ability, giving us the minimum running speed or cycling power output required to elicit the VO2 max plateau. Training at VO2 max is a way to fast track adaptation in a very short period of time. Recent research has shown that for highly trained athletes, it is one way to optimise their training environments and indeed is necessary to do so once they achieve a VO2 max above 60 millilitres per kilogram per minute. It also represents a time efficient way for those that are less trained to get significant advantages in their performance rate of adaptation with a very small amount of time investment required. At Exercise Institute, we base most of our training principles in and around VO2 max training. We want to outline where the ceiling of VO2 max occurs, tailor that to each individual's physiology in power output terms, and then progressively increase the amount of time each individual is spending at their VO2 max recognising that this will drive adaptation at a much greater rate than spending large amounts of time at lower intensities. Thanks for listening.